They are small in stature, yet gigantic in talent. They can do things that most of us only dream of. These athletes soar through the air and tumble with grace, style, and class. Gymnasts in the Pac-10 have known the national championships and have earned Olympic gold. And today, they are competing for one of collegiate gymnastics' most coveted titles. In the next 90 minutes, you'll see them vault, soar, balance, and dance with only one goal in mind. A Pac-10 title. The Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships are next. One year of training for one day in the Arizona sun, but it's one day that can last a lifetime as we crown the best in the West. Welcome to the 2010 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships from McHale Center on campus at the University of Arizona. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Watson alongside 96 Olympic gold medalist Amanda Borden. We've been doing this for a long time and this is the best Pac-10s that we can remember in recent memory. We have five individual champions returning from last year, and on the team side, three of the nation's best. Well, two of those teams have tossed this championship back and forth for the last 13 years, UCLA and Stanford. Stanford does seem to win it on even years, so this could be their year, but it is not going to be easy because three of the teams here are ranked in the top seven in the nation, UCLA, Stanford, and Oregon State. Now, it's going to come down to the team that hits the best routines today, but Jim, I do think UCLA is the team to beat. During the regular season, Stanford and UCLA met twice, and Stanford beat the Bruins on both occasions. Let's talk about the individual battle. It is loaded, and it's a blend of past, present, and future. So let's start with the defending champion, the senior from Stanford, Carly Janiga. Well, for Stanford and Carly, the postseason last year didn't quite end the way they wanted. So now there's a fire within this team, and especially within Carly. She is one of the most consistent collegiate gymnasts I have ever seen. But the good news for Stanford is that she can post nine nines or better on all four of the events. Yeah, she leads Stanford in each category, nine fives all the way across the board for Carly Janica. Her biggest challenger, same one as last year. Mandy Rodriguez, the senior from Oregon State, finished second. She was the 2009 Pac-10 Gymnast of the Year. We talked to her yesterday. She said she wants the individual title. Well, you know what? Oregon State always flies under the radar, but you cannot count them out. They do not have a lot of routines that wow you, but they are consistently great across the board. And one of their great performance is Mandy. She's dynamic and powerful, and she'll be anchoring on two of her best events, the floor exercise and the vault. At 21 individual titles for Mandy Rodriguez this year. So that takes care of the past and the present. The future, and really it started last year, the sophomore from UCLA, Vanessa Zamaripa. She burst on the scene as a freshman, finished third in the all-around, and this year the kid has been absolutely consistent, hitting 36 out of 37 routines. Well, and she's not the only reason that UCLA is the team to beat. They have talent across their board from their seniors like Anna Lee all the way down to their underclassmen. She is the powerhouse, and like you mentioned, she came in as a freshman and took third in the all-around, which is extremely impressive. But now she's back with not just more experience, but more confidence to help the UCLA Bruins defend this title. UCLA head coach Valerie Condos Field says Vanessa Zamaripa is the most talented athlete she's ever had in Westwood. Here's your tournament format. Seven teams of the championship, seven rotations, four apparatus. So three teams with a bye in each rotation will crown five individual champions, including the all-around. This is the fourth time that the Pac-10 championships have been held inside McHale Center. 1992, Oregon State won it. In 97, UCLA won it. And in 2004, Stanford won it. And we have those same three as our favorites today. Let's take a look at rotation number one. The buys will be Arizona, Stanford, and ASU. So they will start in the corral watching the rest. California on the vault. The bars go to Washington, Oregon State on the floor. And UCLA will start on the beam. UCLA is number one in the Pac-10 and number four in the nation on the beam. And UCLA has changed their lineup at the beginning of the season. They had some younger athletes at the top and it wasn't working. So Valerie Condos Field, the UCLA coach, took her anchor, Anna Lee, and moves her to the leadoff spot. But Anna Lee comes in less than 100%. Well, you know, she does have a bad ankle and they're questioning if she's gonna be able to do the all around. The only thing on this event that is a question, however, is the dismount. It's a very tough event to start on. You have a lot of adrenaline coming out of the chute. Got to control that adrenaline. Slight bobble there. That is why Coach Val picked Anna Lee to be up first. She's calm and confident. Needs to get the ball rolling on this event. Anna 
Lee, fourth in the Pac-10 coming in in this event. She actually won a share of the 2007 Pac-10 beam title. Well, all that is left is the dismount. She performs a round off double full. This is what they talked about, all the tension, the stress on that left ankle. I wonder if she's thinking about it right now. So far, it's been a great lead off routine. And very nice. Saw a little step there favoring the left ankle. She kind of stepped to the right, but a lot of pressure here on this landing as she fights, and you can see she's favoring it, which is why yeah, she has got to be a, a little shot of adrenaline through her. You know, February 21st is when they changed the lineup. We talked to the head coach about it. About a month ago or so, we decided to totally mix it up and put the person that is going to help the team get calm, confidence, for the rest of the lineup, who is that person? That person is their leader, Anna Lee. And I asked her, are you willing to take one for the team? Because you know you're probably gonna get, it's gonna affect your all around score. And she said, I've worked too hard for this team. I will absolutely take one for the team. Valerie Condosfield, the UCLA head coach, and she's been on staff at UCLA for, oh goodness, 28 years, 20 years as the head coach. So she certainly knows what she's doing. Elise Hoffner Hibbs, another veteran, in the second position for UCLA. By the way, 9775 on the opening beam for Anna Lee for UCLA. Very difficult flight series. Aerial layout, step out. So far, the key for that first routine is to get some momentum going. Once they get the momentum going on this event, you hope to just put up six great routines. And Elise is one of those routines that is a delight to watch. She's dynamic, powerful. UCLA is just stacked on this event. Vanessa Zamoripa, the sophomore we talked about for the all-around, is number one in the Pac-10. And this woman, Elise hoffner hibbs is second in the Pac-10, eighth in the nation on the beam. She has actually scored a perfect 10 on this event. Very difficult to do. Also a round-up double full. Great landing. So far, so good for UCLA. Won't be a 10, but it'll be a pretty good score. It's another look at that dismount. So UCLA off to a very good start. The lineup changed, started in mid-February, is still paying off for the Bruins at the Pac-10 Championships. Back inside McHale Center at the 2010 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. We move over to the floor from Oregon State. Michaela Stambaugh, who's tied for first in the Pac-10 and tied for third in the nation. Amanda, she averages better than a 9-9 on the floor. Well, Oregon State is very dynamic on this event. And Michaela is one of those athletes. She has big tumbling. And, and the biggest thing on floor exercise is, yes, they need to perform all those kind of things. They need the big tumbling. But it comes down to the landings. They have three tumbling passes, all three of them very important. Last year, the floor exercise saved Oregon State. They finished second in the overall team standings but they stumbled out of the gate on the beam. Then they came to the floor in their second rotation and went six for six. This is a big event for them. Well, this is a much easier event to start on. A little adrenaline actually helps your performance on the floor exercise. Opening the routine with the whip. Immediate two and a half, great landing. This is the event where you get to see a lot of the personality of each athlete. usually the one you'll see their teammates performing with them in the background. Crowd gets into as well. She comes right back with her second tumbling pass. Round off one and a half front full, another great landing. Pretty solid so far for a freshman. You'd expect her first pack tens, her first event, maybe a little rattled. You'll see throughout these routines, they're a minute and a half. You'll see a dance combinations, turns, as well as the tumbling elements. All requirements without within the floor routine. It takes a lot of endurance as she gets ready for that third tumbling pass. Very nice front Rudy. Something unique about that routine, you don't see an athlete typically do three front tumbling passes. And you could tell on her face before the, the music even hit the last note, she was very happy with that performance, same with her teammates. That's a nice start for the freshman. Mandy Rodriguez, the champion from 2009 on the floor. 
performing to very dynamic, serious music. You mentioned how powerful she is on this event. See a little attitude there. Here comes that first tumbling pass, opening with a double Arabian. Very difficult. Stayed in bounds there. Half step, but just inside. It's a difficult pass because it's a blind landing. She can't see the floor before she hits the floor. See a little over rotation, that adrenaline. She's going to want clean landings on the final two passes. Coming right back, whip half front full. Almost went out of bounds there again. Same result at the end, yeah, a little hop. Throughout this whole routine, she has tremendous height on everything she does, not just the tumbling, every jump, every movement. And you and I have talked about it before, but she is one of the taller gymnasts in the country at 5'7", yet she's still an elegant performer. It's very impressive, very dynamic, really brings a different look to gymnastics. One more tumbling pass to go. Front Rudy right to Shushinova. Can't mess up that landing. Supposed to be on the stomach there. Not her best routine. That's her head coach, Tanya Chaplin, in the background. And orange sweater, keeping an eye on it and reacting. The senior from Southern California, Mandy Rodriguez, who was second in the all-around last year. And she talked about Gunner for Janica winning the all-around this time. We're gonna take another look at one of her tumbling passes. You can see she's a very serious performer on this event. She opened with a beautiful double rave, and you can see just a little too much rotation, but she did a great job of staying in the bounce. Had she touched the white, it would have been a tenth of a deduction. Rodriguez was second last year. She won the vault at 995. She tied on the floor at 99, but she was second in the overall. And yesterday we sat her down and talked about taking home the title everything I've worked for. I went in after last year, you know, getting named Gymnast of the Year, and, and that was really exciting and a huge honor, but I went first. Mandy Rodriguez, 21 event titles in 2010. Is it good enough this time around? She was second in the all-around, and she wants it. And Janiga is the defending champion. Carly Janiga for Stanford, still to come, along with Vanessa Zamaripa, the sophomore from UCLA. It's the 2010 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships from Tucson, Arizona. 22 consecutive regional appearances for Arizona Gymnastics. That's the Mary Roby Training Center here on campus at the U of A. After one rotation of the 2010 championships, UCLA on the beam with the lead 49-275. Oregon State on the floor, 49 level. Washington was on the bars. Cal on the vault. Arizona, Arizona State, and Stanford had buys. So we'll see them now in rotation two. Lisa Shino now on the bars for Stanford. Shino ranked fifth in the Pac-10. She is 10th in the nation, just under 9-9. She's beautiful to watch on this event. She releases up to the high bar, comes right back. Something the judges are specifically looking for on the uneven bars is hitting the vertical handstands on her release moves and, of course, the cast handstands, the pirouettes as she winds up. Finishing her routine out with a double layout, spots the landing. Very nice routine. Ashino, who posted a 9-8 on this event last year to finish 12th, then went on to the regionals and won the Bars title. And it's been a long road for Elise Ashino, the alternate on the 2004 U.S. Olympic team. And at Stanford, she's had to fight back from both illness and injuries her first two seasons. Taking another look at her dismount, she performed a double layout, spotted the landing and nailed it. You know, Stanford's really holding it together. They had that mishap in the beginning of the rotation. Puts a lot of pressure on the last five in the lineup. So far, it's been great. Here in the second rotation, Stanford on the bars, Arizona on the vault, Washington on the beam, Arizona State is on the floor, and the heavies, Oregon State, UCLA getting a bye, along with California. Stanford is number two in the Pac-10 as a team and number five in the nation on the bars. And this is the senior. Carly Janiga from just up the road, Paradise Valley near Phoenix. She's ranked fourth in the Pac-10. She was eighth in the NCAA in this event coming in and ninth in the all-around. She is the one to beat, the all-around champion from last year. Well, Carly has a lot of experience, not just in the collegiate world now for, because she's a senior, but she was a great elite athlete, tried out for the Olympics. A lot of experience under pressure. First event out, we're gonna see if she's ready to handle the pressure today. 
Lisa Shino, her score a 9-8. So a nice mark for Janica to build off of. By the way, Janica at this event last year finished second at the NCAA championship. So you're about to see one of the best in the nation. What makes her great at this event is she's very dynamic, but she's really tight and hits those vertical lines starting right out on the low bar, up to the high bar, that handstand right there, nailed it. And again, another one right there. Big release move here. Beautiful routine so far. All she has left is the dismount. Another double layout. Very nice. Back-to-back -back clean routines for Stanford on the bars. First is Shino and now Janiga. They're two big hitters. Janiga, by the way, besides being the all-around champion from last year, has won the beam the last two years. Let's take another look at her dismount. She was flawless up to this point. Beautiful double layout. Small hop on the landing, but really that could be the only deduction. See, she has perfect timing coming right off the bar. Spots it, slight hop. That's gonna be a big score for Stanford. Carly Janiga is a six-time All-American, as we said, the Pac-10 champion in the all-around last year, but she said she'd trade all those individual accolades for a team title. I train all the time with the 15 girls on the team, and to go out there, I mean, I'm competing just for every single person on that team. I'm competing for my school, and individual honors are kind of distant in everyone's minds. So, you know, it was great to win last year, but it would have been so much better to be standing on that podium with 14 other girls. Carly Janiga, not only a great athlete, but a great student athlete as well. Her score, a 9.85 on the bar. So as Sheena goes 9.8, Janiga goes 9.85 for Stanford. Carly's score was great, but she isn't the anchor. They still have another routine. And that's from Jenny Peter. She had a beautiful release move to start, comes right back again, nailing those handstands. When your first routine is up and you have a mistake like that, there is so much pressure on this person right here. All she has left is the dismount, giant full right to double tuck, and, she and they gets, did it. They have to score it, every one of them, after the fall to start in the leadoff spot, they had to score every one. See Kristen Smith, the Stanford head coach, first one to greet Jenny Peter, sophomore from Lincoln, Nebraska. Her grandfather played in the St. Louis Cardinals organization with Dizzy Dean, Billy Martin, Satchel Page. So good lineage here. This was her dismount. Small step there, but again, Stanford was so clean on their release moves and their handstands, they're gonna score well there. Gonna move over to the floor, Arizona State. And Nikki Johnson, who has one of the more inventive routines. We're told she does a Lady Gaga routine and it's one of those that always gets the crowd involved, and they told us you just got to see it to believe it. ASU struggled on this event, had a couple falls. Their first routine wasn't quite what they needed. So they've had to count a couple falls already to this point. So now they have nothing to lose. They need to go out there, have a good time. Well, Nikki Johnson is capable of a big number here. She's gone as high as 9-9. Nine, nine. Back on the bars, Jenny Peters' score was a 9-8 for Stanford, so they close with a 9-8, 9-8-5, and another 9-8. She opens with a big first pass, a lot of power here. Huge double pike, nails the landing. Great lead pass, you can see. She has a lot of fun with this routine. You can hear her teammates going wild as well. Comes right back here with our second tumbling pass. Beautiful Rudy layout step out, another great landing. There it is, as you mentioned, little poker face. <laughs> Think she's got her poker face on. <laughs> you know, it's always.
always really important to have music that you actually enjoy. It's hard to get out here and perform and look like you're having fun if you don't like the music you're performing to. Well, and, and counting all the, uh, the training sessions, how many times do you hear the song <laughs> a year? That's right. Very nice routine for ASU there. From Perry Meridian High School in Indianapolis, Nikki Johnson, the freshman at Arizona State. That's her head coach, John Speeney, who's, who's in his 30th year as the head coach at Arizona State, longest tenured coach at ASU. Taking another look at her front tumbling pass, her third tumbling pass, front full, front pike, little low there on that front pike, but she pulled off a great landing. And that's gonna be the best score of their lineup so far. That's a veteran coach, 30 years, talking to a freshman. We mentioned earlier for Stanford, they had the problem with Shelly Alexander, who was the leadoff, who had a pretty clean routine until the dismount. Well, she was winding up for the dismount, and she actually peeled off through the bottom, didn't get enough height, and was able to pull it around safely, but not able to hold on to that landing. And she was first up, put a lot of pressure on the lineup, but they seemed to really pull it off and be able to handle it. Yeah, the other five competitors for Stanford really answered the call after that, especially with those last three. Back to the floor, and junior Mary Atkinson, who won the all-around and posted a 9.85 on the floor last week in a tri-meet against BYU and Boise State. Last year on this event, Atkinson posted a 9.87 and finished eighth. She's one of their powerhouses on both floor and vault. Well, she's a pretty good all-arounder as well. She's in the top 20 in the nation. She's actually anchoring ASU on all four of the events today. Nicole Johnson score a 9.725. Started it out with dramatic music. You saw a little smile in there. Opens with double Arabian there again. A very difficult pass, a blind landing. You can see she landed on the mat. The mats are allowed in competition as long as they stay in bounds. Second tumbling pass. Very nice round off whip. Double full, small hop there. All of the athletes have to use combinations to earn back bonus points. The judges then flash start values and they're hoping to earn up to a 10.0 start value. Things like connecting the whip to the double full and of course leap combinations, turn combinations are all ways to earn those bonus points back. She catches her breath for the third tumbling pass. it out the double tuck great landing nikki johnson and mary atkinson definitely pulled it back together for asu there at the end mary atkinson from chesapeake virginia the junior she has six floor wins this year and four all-around titles we will see her again mary atkinson nice job along with nikki johnson arizona state the sun devils just up the road down in tucson for the pac-10 gymnastics championships Scores after two rotations. Washington, the only squad through two events. The bars in the beam for the dogs. UCLA, a bye after their beam. And Arizona in third place. That's after two rotations. Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships continue from McHale Center in Tucson. And that is the talented sophomore from Illinois, Vanessa Zamaripa for UCLA. Chris Waller, assistant coach at UCLA, talking her up right before her floor exercise. UCLA is number one in the Pac-10 as a team number one in the nation, and Zamaripa individually is eighth best in the country on this event. Earlier on the beam, an excellent performance, a 9-9-0, so that rotation change for Valerie Condos Field and the Bruins paying off here at the Pac-10s. Well, Jim, you mentioned they're number one on this event. There is a reason. They have a big tumbling, but more importantly, they have the best dance and choreography, not just in the Pac-10, but by far in the country. And that's Condos Field, that's her specialty. Valerie Condos Field, the head coach for UCLA, who has a uh, background as a ballerina. 
they almost, you almost forget it's a gymnastics competition because it feels like entertainment. They're just make you want to stop talking and just sit back and watch. Huge double pike. And the best thing is they always show their personality and they just draw not just the judges in, but the crowd in. It's not just about putting a smile on your face, it's about an attitude oh, and, and you, a swagger. You said it already. <laughs> Even with all that's going on at the Pac-10, your eye goes to the floor when UCLA is performing. Beautiful double full layout step out. She makes it look effortless. We had a chance to watch her in practice and it's just her style, she's elegant, she's powerful. And she's so relaxed. Looks like she's having a great time every time, whether it's workout or competition. I think she was more nervous when she talked to us yesterday. <laughs> that smile. Vanessa's third in the lineup. They have had great scores up to this point. Nine eights are better. She gets ready for that third tumbling pass. Finishes it with a beautiful Rudy. Perfect landing. She's got to be happy with that. <laughs> As she went 9825 on this event last year in the Pac 10s and finished 14th, remember, she was third in the all-around. Well, she had great landings on all three of her tumbling passes. This one, her last, a Rudy. Not a single deduction there on that landing. Excellent work by the sophomore from O'Fallon, Illinois. She's only five feet, one inches. <laughs> Let's take a look at the rotation here. Obviously, UCLA is on the floor, Stanford on the beam, Cal on the bars, and Oregon State on the vault. Now remember, Stanford, UCLA, and Oregon State are the heavy, so we're trying to keep an eye on all three of these squads. They're all in action right now. And back to the floor for UCLA, Brittany McCullough. Brittany McCullough is seventh in the pack town on the floor, just under a 9-9 a average. And she tied for sixth place, the pack 10s on the floor last year with her teammate, Mizuki Sato. They both went 9-8-5. Well, we talked about when UCLA, what makes them so great at this event. Well, there is nothing truer to that statement than this floor routine. There's attitude, there's great choreography, and some of the highest tumbling I have ever seen. She is explosive on these. Look at Huge that. Huge pull in there. Having done this for my whole life, I'm telling you, it is not easy. And to get out there and do tumbling passes is one thing, but to put it all into a, a performance package, that's what makes it difficult. Coming right back, beautiful second pass. There again, so dynamic. Really important for her to be able to control that dynamics and nail these landings also. Even on skills like that, a very difficult torgite full. favorite event because you get to show your personality. <laughs> A little strut there. See your teammates picking up the energy as she gets ready for that last tumbling pass. Finishes it with a huge double pike, the pass you see most gymnasts open with. Another great routine. UCLA, the best in the country as a team on the floor. We call a homegrown product from Corona, just about to 20 miles from downtown Los Angeles. Well, they've got some great momentum going on this event. She had some outstanding passes right here. Beautiful last pass, Look double pipe. You see most gymnasts perform that in the first tumbling pass, let alone after dancing around like that for a minute and 15 yeah, seconds. Yeah, when your energy is the <laughs> highest at the beginning of your routine. I've seen Brittany McCullough perform the floor for the last couple of years, I don't know, 15 times, and it still amazes me the height that she gets. Well, and she makes it look easy, and I'm telling you, it's yeah. not. <laughs> Back over to the vaults, Oregon State's and junior Becky Colvin is next up. Who's tied for second in the Pac-10 and fifth in the nation. Performing your Chanko laid out full. Let's see a little off center there, not a huge deduction.
But like I said, a very difficult vault to do. It does start at a 10.0, and you're going to see that vault all day long from almost every single team. Elise Hoffner Hibbs now for UCLA, next up on the floor. And Brittany McCullough, her score just put up a 9-9. Did I see that 9 9 9925 I told you those landings wow. were pretty impressive. That is a huge score for Brittany McCullough at UCLA. Keeping an eye on the all-around, Carly Janica is over on the beam, so we'll try to show you that performance, give you her score here in a couple of minutes. She's the defending champion. Woo! There's that double Arabian, very difficult. So far, so good. She's one of my favorite performers to watch on this. She's got some great dance moves, a lot of personality. One and a half, front layout half, right to Shushinova. Hopner hips. Struggled a little bit on the floor at the Pac 10s last year. She finished only 27th, a 9 7. She's been much better this year. In fact, she's ranked number one in the Pac 10 and third in the nation at better than a 9 9. 9 9 2, in fact. Well, so far, this has been a great routine. Very consistent on the floor. 16 scores of better than 9 8. You can see everybody in the arena is turned watching them finish up their yeah. floor routines. Yeah, even all the other athletes. Finishing double pike, huge. Great routine. Wow, they are on a roll. Uh, UCLA is piling up the points on the floor. That 9925 for Brittany McCullough earlier that tied her career high. And Nikki Tom, who was put into the lineup for UCLA, tied a career high with a 9875 earlier for the Bruins. Well, she had some outstanding tumbling passes. Let's take a look. This is her third tumbling pass, just like Brittany performing a very difficult double pike at the end of that routine. And you can see she's not only happy, her whole team is. And nobody's won more. Pac-10 team championships and UCLA 14. Stanford has five and Oregon State has four. Oregon State was second to UCLA last year and Mandy Rodriguez was second in the all around. Here's Rodriguez now on the vault. Second in the Pac-10, fifth in the nation. Well, we talked about our power. Watch this, your chain goes full. Very nice landing. It doesn't get much better than that. Mike Chaplin, the assistant coach and, and there's Tanya Chaplin, the head coach, husband and wife. In Corvallis, hugs at both ends of the runway for Mandy Rodriguez. Let's take another look. She gets tremendous height here off the table, but more importantly, even though she's tall, she has a great body line in the air, stays nice and straight, spots the landing, and doesn't even move. We will give you Mandy Rodriguez's score as she continues to chase the all-around title in Tucson when we come back to the 2010 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. The 2010 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships are being brought to you by MFS Financial Management, creating innovative investments for financial professionals, their clients, and institutional investors since 1924. Jim Watson, Amanda Borden, gold medalist from 96 on a beautiful day in Tucson inside the McHale Center for the 2000 edition of the Pac-10 Championships. This event started in 1987, and Tanya Chaplin, the Oregon State head coach, who was then known as Tanya Service, was a star at UCLA, won the bars and the beam, and took home the very first Pac-10 all-around championship. We talked with her about that day 23 years ago and what it still means to her today. The further you get away from it, you look at um, how, what an honor it is, what a unique situation, those, those opportunities don't come around. And to be able to say that you're a Pac-10 champion, a national champion, um, to be an All-American. Um, there are very few athletes that are able to say that. And um, you take great pride in being able to say that. A little emotion in her voice, and, and I would imagine so. Amanda Borden, you have many trophies on your shelf at home, but some of them mean a little bit more because they were early in your career. Well, like she said, the further you get away from them, the more you appreciate them. I know specifically exactly what she's talking about. If you could only go back and experience it all again, you, you know, you'd do it in a heartbeat. She has done a fabulous job in Corvallis, Oregon State, is number seven in the nation. Tanya Chaplin, the three-time Pac-10 Coach of the Year, 99, 05, and 08. 
Here's Whitney Watson from Tustin, California, on the vault, leading off for the Beavs. Beautiful, Yurchenko. Nailed that landing. There's Mike Chaplin to congratulate her. And Whitney's all fired up. And she had ankle surgery last year and has had to fight back for her spot in the lineup. Well, let's take another look. A beautiful Yurchenko full, but more importantly, she spots the landing and fights for every 10th. What a great vault. Over to the beam for Stanford and Elisa Shino. Elisa Shino tied for eighth in the Pac-10 on this event. She finished in a four-way tie for second last year, going 9-9 on the beam. She's beautiful on this event. A lot of confidence. Back handspring layout, step out. See a very confident landing. Nice jump series. You can see she's very precise in her arm movements, vital for this event. You don't want any balance checks. But along with being nice and tight, she has great flow on this event. Beautiful side summy. Gives you a great view of the beam. Remember, it's only four inches wide, four feet off the ground. And as you get older on this event, you appreciate what you were able to do as a youngster as well. Nice switch leap. Gainer layout full off the side. Woo, small stumble there on the landing. Alisa Shino for Stanford ends up with a 9-8 on the beam. Through four rotations and things a little bit uneven right now. Washington and California out front because they are through three events. UCLA, Arizona, Stanford, Oregon State, and Arizona State all through two events. McHale Center, Tucson, Arizona, the 2010 inversion of the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. We are in rotation five. That means Stanford is on the floor. Arizona beam. Beavs of Oregon State move to the bars and UCLA occupying the vaults. Let's start first with Stanford, who's number two in the Pac-10 on the floor and also number two in the nation. Earlier, Ashino at 9775 on the beam. Stanford, one of the favorites. UCLA, the defending team champion. Oregon State was second, Stanford was third. But over the last 13 years, UCLA and Stanford have alternated the team title. Beautiful first tumbling pass, one and a half front layout. This is another team. They're ranked number two right behind UCLA on this event. And it always stands out, their choreography. Of course, Coach Kristen Smith, another great choreographer. By the way, Stanford was 14 and two in dual meets this year. That is the best record in Stanford history in two of those victories over UCLA. She is so fun to watch on this event. Not just a great dancer, really pulls you in with her attitude. Stanford has gotten the two most difficult events out of the way, the bars and the beam. It's always fun ending on the floor exercise and, of course, the vault. Ironically, this is the event that spelled doom for Stanford last year at home. Well, in a competition like the Pac-10s, any of them can spell doom because the, co the competition can be really tight, but <laughs> she liked that. Routine. She knows all pumped up. She fires off the mat. <laughs> She had a phenomenal performance, beautiful tumbling. Let's take another look here. Her last tumbling pass, difficult double pike, great landing. And you can see a lot of attitude and she loved it. Keep an eye on Stanford on the floor. Meantime, over on the vault, Anna Lee has returned to action. Remember, we told you at the very top of the show about that bad left ankle. She performs Yurchenko, layout full. 
didn't seem to affect her there. She actually did not compete in the floor. So we were wondering if she was going to be able to pull that off. That was a huge vault, and she's excited. Yeah, Anna Lee went 9775 on the beam, and the coaches were telling us, watch her dismount and her landing on that beam, and that'll tell you whether she's going to be in the rest of the day. She looked pretty good, but they scratched her from the floor. She returns here on the vault. Well, beautiful layout, Yurchenko, the most common vault we see in college gymnastics, stuck the landing, and you know, the one thing I was questioning is, will she fight to stick it? Because that's what actually hurts the ankle is when you come in and you're fighting for that landing. UCLA is the best team in the Pac-10 on the vault. They're the second best team in the country. And Anna Lee is 10th in the nation. Excuse me, 10th in the Pac-10 at 9855. We'll give you her score in a second. Elisa Shino, meantime, on the floor has received her mark. 9875 for Ashino on the floor for Stanford. Elise Hopner hibbs next up for UCLA on the vault. Hopner hibbs eighth in the Pac-10 this year. She finished 10th in this event. Last year tied with her teammate Brittany McCullough. They both posted 985s. Well, she is another dynamic vaulter, one of many on the UCLA team. A lot of power in the run. Layout full. Wow. Great landing. Sophomore Elise Softner Hibbs, UCLA. We'll take another look at this vault. Starts from a 10-0 start value, so they're looking for the height off the table, the body position in the air, and of course, the landing. Nobody does it better than UCLA on that event. That was a good event for the Bruins last year, too. They had five scores in the top 17 here at the Pac-10s en route to a Pac-10 team championship. Over to the bars, and Mandy Rodriguez, one of our all-arounds we've been watching all day. Rodriguez was 12th in this event last year, but she posted a 9-8, so a good score for 12. Well, beautiful release move sequence there. Up to the high bar, came back down with a pack salto. This would be the event that the height would come into factor. To be 5'7 on this event is very difficult to be able to hit those vertical lines. Finishes with double front. A oh. little short. Well, you know, those blind landings, I actually competed that dismount. Very difficult. You come off the bar, you're flipping forward, so you can't see the ground. You can't see how high you are, how much rotation you have. She overdid it. She over rotated it. Wow, yeah, that's a big got deduction her. there. And that is really going to hurt Oregon State. Last year, this was their best event at the Pac 10s. By the way, Elise Hopner Hibbs, a 9875 on that vault, will come back. Carly Janiga back into action, the defending champion in the all around. Carly Janica, sixth in the Pac-10 on this event, the floor exercise. She finished sixth also last year here at the Pac-10s. For a minute, it looked like she was talking to herself, but she's actually getting some last-minute coaching. You'll see a lot of these athletes actually talk to themselves also, kind of go through a mental routine, or what I used to call autopilot. Well, here it looks like they're just trying to relax or take some deep breaths. And, and you see some athletes, I know Apollo Ono, the speed skater, likes to yawn before yeah. big events, he says that lets out a lot of energy. Yep. The all around is between Carly Janiga of Stanford, Mandy Rodriguez of Oregon State, and Vanessa Zamaripa of UCLA, the sophomore. But Mandy Rodriguez, as we just showed, fell on her landing on the bars and received a 9-2-5. So essentially, the all around is down to two athletes now, Zamaripa of UCLA, and here Carly Janiga, the defending champion, the senior from Stanford. We mentioned how consistent she is. And that's the key to being a great all-arounder, is being able to put up four big scores. She gets ready for this first tumbling pass. We've seen a lot of double Arabians, which you don't see in collegiate gymnastics all that often because they are so difficult to land. However, that was the best one so far today. And I was thinking when I was watching the Stanford coach talk to Jan again, get in her head a little bit before this performance. She's a psych major. <laughs> so it all falls into place, doesn't it? Well, being a great competitor is mostly to do with the mental side of it. In fact, that's gymnastics for you. Every athlete out here is physically phenomenal. It's the question of who can put it out there on the day and Carly is that athlete. And athletics is just one side of Janiga. She's also the student athlete of the year in the Pac-10. You can 
Yeah, I didn't see there. Teammates in the corral. <laughs> right in her ears. Last tumbling pass. Double tuck. Beautiful. We talked about her consistency. You know, I can't recall making, you know, she has a bobble every now and then, but she never makes any major mistakes. Just doesn't do it. Another, that's going to be another big score, not just for Stanford, but her and the all around. You know, only one athlete in the history of the Pac-10 has ever gone back to back as the all-around champion, and that was Mohini Bahardwaj of UCLA in 2000 and 2001. So a bit of history here within reach for Carly Janiga. Well, this is her last tumbling pass, double tuck. Beautiful landing, a solid routine, and that's gonna be a big score. Here's Kristen Smith, her head coach. Kristen Smith, the four-time Pac-10 coach of the year, 04. 06, 07, and 09, and what a job she has done. Stanford came out of nowhere and now is one of the best programs in the country. In fact, Stanford is 37 and six over the last three seasons. Brittany McCullough now on the vault for UCLA. Here comes a lot of power. And you can see that big step on the landing. You know, when you have an athlete that is that powerful, sometimes it's difficult to control the landing. Let's take another look. She has Tremendous speed on this run as she enters into the Yurchenko. Great layout full, and you could just see too much momentum carried her back there on the landing. However, that's still going to be a big score. Yeah, 9 8 2 5 for Brittany McCullough on the vault, and we go over to the bars, Oregon State, and Michaela Stambaugh, who's tied for seventh in the Pac 10. Beautiful Jaeger right to a shoot over. Last hand stand there, really important. They're hitting those angles as she winds up for a full twisting double back. Good landing, nice solid performance. The bars are almost always Oregon State's best event. Well, they had a mistake right off the top, so really important here that they're not just fighting to hit these routines, but they're fighting for every landing. Stambaugh awarded a 9-8 on the bars. And here's uh, our other all around, Vanessa Zamaripa on the vault. She needs to stay with Janica, big number here. Wow. <laughs> she makes it look effortless. By far the best vault we've seen today. Valerie Condos Field, the head coach, says the most talented athlete she's had in Westwood. She says she does everything well. Well, this is beautiful. Perfect form. Spots the landing like she does it. No problem, day in and day out. And that number for Zamariba is a 995. That puts her into first place. She needed a big number. She got a huge number. And Carly Janica went 9925. She's tied with McCullough for first on the floor. And then there were two. University of Arizona Hall of Fame, of course, includes some gymnastics paraphernalia. U of A, 23rd in the country. They were the preseason number 20 and looking for another appearance in the regionals. This is our score after five rotations. UCLA has literally vaulted back to the top, 148.050. Stanford, great effort on the floor, back into second, and a surprise. How about the Wildcats in third? 2010 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships at McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona. Jim Watson and 96 gold medals. Amanda Borden earlier, great performance over on the bars from Sarah Tomchek the senior for the University of Arizona, senior last time in her home building, and she rose to the occasion. Huge release move right to a shoot over there. You know, U of A's got the home crowd advantage, and it, it seems to be paying off. They are putting routine after routine out, and some great performances for them as she winds up for the dismount. Full twisting double back, great landing. Big smile on the face of the senior from Naperville, Illinois. And nothing like performing in front of your own crowd as a senior. She ended up with a 9.85 to match a 9.85 earlier on the vault. That's always special for the seniors the last time in their home building. So now we're on to rotation six, and this is where we are. Washington on the vault. Arizona State bars, Oregon State beam. California is on the floor, and you see the buys at the bottom. Stanford and UCLA along with the U of A sitting out this rotation. We check in with Cal's Avery G. Avery G was the top finisher for Cal on the floor in last year's meet. She threw up a 9.725, which was good for 24th. 
but she's had a much better season this year on the floor. A 9.85 is her top mark. She's one of Cal's all-arounders. You can see her beam score there, a 9.6. She prepares for the floor exercise. Signal from the judges. Steps onto the floor. This was Cal's strongest event in six of their last seven meets. Opening a routine up with a nice double pike. Great height, spotted that landing, very nice. The Bears is a team on a little bit of a roll. Kerry Dubois, the 2003 Pac-10 Coach of the Year is the head coach in California. And the Bears are coming off their, their highest team score of the season. So peaking at the end. Came back with a beautiful front tumbling pass, front full front lay. dance combinations that judges are looking for. Really important that they not only get their feet closed, that they complete those 360s. Very creative move there. Oh, I like that too. After doing gymnastics for as long as a lot of these athletes have, it's what kind of intricate creative choreography and new moves you can come up with because they can all do double backs and double fulls and all that kind of stuff. It's a matter of who can be the most creative. You can see the judges right behind her just glaring. Looking for something new, you, you want to surprise the judges, That's right? That's right. And put a smile on their face. That was my goal, and a great routine for Cal. Avery G, the junior from Los Altos, California, down near Los Angeles, and happy with her performance, and she should be. It's the last pass. She had outstanding tumbling. She finished this routine with a double tuck. Great landing. Very clean routine. And a little smile into the camera. Good for her. She earned it. Let's check in once again with Mandy Rodriguez. Mandy Rodriguez, of course, one of our favorites coming in in the all-around. She was second last year, and she started out pretty well. Went 9-9 on vaults and uh, 9-8-2-5 on the floor. But her bars dismount was a problem. She fell and went 9-2-5. So she is, at least for the time being, taking herself out of the all-around competition. But Mandy's a true competitor. She knows how important it is for her to come back on this event and put up a big score here. Now she tied for fifth Pac-10s last year on the beam with 9.85. Beautiful swing down. I mentioned her power and, and how dynamic she is on floor and vault, but this is actually my favorite event to watch her on. She brings great height on those jumps. For as long as I can remember watching her on this event, she's always solid. She dismounts front one and a half off the end. Great landing, very nice routine. Great comeback after the fall on bars. Let's take another look at the dismount. Front one and a half, spotted the landing. Very nice. While we wait for uh, Mandy Rodriguez to score, Avery G for California earlier on the floor receives a 9-8. So now we move over to the bars. Arizona State's Nikki Johnson. Nice release move. A little pike there on that handstand. Remember, one of the keys to this event is hitting those vertical lines. Nice kip cast handstand there. Giant full. Oh, a little off balance there. Obviously not supposed to stop. Usually you see the athletes kind of counterbalance as they're swinging down through the, the bottom of the next giant, able to work out of it, but wasn't able to happen as she finishes with a double tuck. ASU's had a tough time all day long, and once again on the bars, not the best performance, and that didn't help. Back to the beam, this is Laura Ann Chong of Oregon State. Oregon State as a team is second in the Pac-10 on this event, and sixth in the nation. Now for Chong, individually, she is tied for third best on this event in the Pac-10 at 987. She's a beautiful performer. Great extension through her legs as she gets ready for her tumbling. Sequence, back handspring, layout, step out, beautiful. 
You know, when you think about the balance beam, what's so unique is that these athletes do the same routines over and over every single day at practice. All they need to do is get out there and do it once, but the pressure seems to always be a factor. Oregon State's done a great job, though, of handling that on this event. And Oregon State is a team, kind of a patchwork quilt, so that uh, Lorian Chong is a Canadian, they have Australians, along with about half the roster Americans. Beautiful punch front. Switch leap with a quarter turn. This has really been a flawless routine. Don't see too many athletes smiling on the beam. <laughs> She's really having a good time. Relaxed. All that's left is the dismount. Another front dismount, front full. Beautiful, beautiful landing. Yeah, the beam uh, very polarizing. You either love it or hate it right now. Lorian <laughs> Chong very happy with her performance on the uh, four inch piece of wood. Let's take another look at the dismount. A nice front layout full. Perfect landing. Say again. Solid performance from Oregon State on the balance beam. Carly Janica, the defending champion in the all around, and Vanessa Zamaripa, who was third last year. It comes down to those two when we come back. Have some co eds on the mall playing the world's most beautiful outdoor game, soccer. It's a cat fight inside McHale Center, the 2010 Gymnastics Championships, and it will come down to this. Oregon State, Washington, and California are finished. And by the way, Oregon State in first has not won the title since 1996. UCLA and Stanford will battle it out. UCLA finishes on the bars, Stanford on the vault, and Stanford is your defending champion. We go to the final rotation, and Carly Janiga, the defending champion in the all-round for Stanford, finds herself trailing the talented sophomore, Vanessa Zamaripa, from UCLA and she stands at the end of the vault runway. She has not been in this position before. Last year, she led throughout. Now she has to come back right here. Your Chango full. That's about as good as it gets. You can see a little off balance on the landing, but that is not gonna be a big deduction. That was a huge vault for Carly. We mentioned how consistent she is, and that's, that's what keeps her on the top, meet after meet, year after year. Beautiful, your Chango full, but most importantly, she spots the landing. You can see just a little off balance, but she ends up saluting before you even really see that step. <laughs> Janiga ends up with a 9.85 on her vault. So she is done. Janiga will finish 39.50 in the all around. Brittany McCullough for UCLA on the bars. She's getting ready for a dismount. Giant full, right to a double pike. Small step. We saw that same kind of landing on vault from Brittany. Of course, that'll be at least a tenth. And that's something that UCLA will definitely be working on before they get to the NCAA championships because that's what separates the top three teams, steps like that. Back over to the vault. By the way, if you're looking for Zamaripa on the bar, she'll be coming up for UCLA in just a couple of minutes. And Zamaripa, we believe, will need a 9-8 on the bars. We'll check that again when we get there. Alyssa Brown now for Stanford. Yurchenko layout full. We mentioned this is the vault we see all day long. So you start seeing the difference between the vaults that are going 9-9 versus that even 9-8. She again had great height off the table. See, she pikes it down just a hair right there. And of course, that step on the landing is a deduction. By the way, earlier we showed you uh, Laura Ann Chong of Oregon State on the beam, and what a huge number she put up. She's trying to ice it down right now, but she was great on the beam, a 9.95, which puts her in first place, obviously, and maybe a Pac-10 championship for her. Brittany McCullough had a 9.8 on the bar, so so far so good for UCLA. Very nice release move there. Michelle Wong here for UCLA. UCLA is number one in the nation on this event as a team. Well, difficult dismount, double front, small hop there on the landing. But at this point, they'll take it. Bruins 
coming in today and hit 63 of 66 routines on the bars. Well, at this point, UCLA has a pretty decent lead, so all they need to do is be clean. They can stay on their feet, hit their vertical lines, put some good routines out there. The title's gonna be theirs. Back to the vault, and Elisa Shino, who has climbed into the all-around, she comes in to this rotation fourth. Wow, beautiful. Stanford has really improved on this event. They're having big vaults, a lot of layout, your Chenko fulls. And most importantly, they're nailing these landings. You can see a slight hop there. But again, that's gonna be another big score. So we already saw Janigan, we saw Elisa Shino, and so now it comes down to our leader, the sophomore from O'Fallon, Illinois. Vanessa Zamaripa. A chance to be a Pac-10 champion in the background, Valerie Condos Field. Her coach almost ignored her when she walked by, because what would you say right now? <laughs> At this point, an athlete like Vanessa knows exactly how to get in her own zone, focus on what she needs to do. Ashino now finishes with 39-3-0 in the all-around. So Janiga, 39-5-0 is our leader. Zamaripa needs a 9-8 on this event to win. And you wonder, what is going on in the head of her? She's, she just finished her teenage years, and here she stands on national TV, a chance to be a Pac-10 champion. All of this potential, everything that's been said, Valerie Condos Field talking about her as the most talented athlete in Westwood, and now is her opportunity to prove it and become a Pac-10 champion. She needs 9-8. As a sophomore. As a sophomore. <laughs> Beautiful bail to handstand. You could see she even paused on the top of the bar, came right back up with the toe heck to the high bar. Wow. Great height there on that Tkachev. All she has left is the dismount winding up. Double layout. A little small step. step there. She needed a 9-8 to win. She finishes with a smile and a step. Is it enough? The release <laughs> move was huge. Yeah, she had great height on her Tkachev. You can see she comes up and over the bar. Beautiful. She has beautiful lines throughout this entire routine. And of course, she winds up performing a double layout dismount. You can see her rotation heading forward a little bit, so she had to step it forward. Shouldn't be more than a 10th, and that's gonna be a close score, but I think it should be a little bit better than a 9-8. Yeah, without the step, I definitely would have said for sure 9-8, <laughs> but, but now she's gonna have to sweat it out that's until right. they post the number. Anna Lee, next up for UCLA, but half the team is watching Anna Lee, and half the team watching that, that score that will be raised momentarily for Vanessa Zamaripa, and will it be enough to lift her to a Pac-10 championship as well? For Annalise, she's gotta put all that out of her mind right now and concentrate on the, the next 60 seconds. Well, she's had a great day today. They pulled her out of the floor competition, but overall, she's been a solid performer. And Coach Val really talked about her stepping into that leadership this year as a senior. Beautiful. That's what makes UCLA number one on this event. They hit those handstands and almost pause for a second, letting the judges know. Here it is, and another huge release move. Winding up, another double layout. Oh, they're and so good on perfect. this event. Boy, the, oh, <laughs> and a double pump of the fist. <laughs> oh, sure, let it out. You're all done now. <laughs> Bruins in the corral. Wow. Waiting for some love. As we said, UCLA number one in the nation on the bars. They've only had three falls all year long as a team on the bars. And Zamaripa not worrying about the Pac-10 championship, just worrying about her teammate. U of A has had a tremendous day with Deanna Graham, one of those members, double Arabian, beautiful landing. She has an outstanding performance throughout the day. Their hot, highest all-around score going into the last rotation. And Deanna Graham has a, a good chance here to move up in the all-around. She snuck in. She actually entered this round almost even with a Shino for third and fourth. So Graham needs a 9-9 now to beat a Shino and take third place. Small deduction there on the landing. 9-9 nine, nine is just about perfect. Yeah, 
Deanna has one tumbling pass to go. U of A has had a great competition, really nailing all of their events today. Finishing this routine with a double tuck. Very nice. This is a close competition. Yeah, Deanna Graham finished sixth on the floor last year as a freshman in 985, and I think she's got at least that number. Deanna Graham needed a 9-9, though, to beat Ashino. Anna Lee over on the bars for UCLA moments ago. We saw all the love and the hug. She was jumping up and down, and she had a right to be excited. Anna Lee just posted a perfect 10 on the bars. You bet. <laughs> Celebrate. Those don't happen very that often. That doesn't happen very often. That's amazing. Good for her. And get it right after Zamaripa. Well, this was a huge dismount, double layout. But this is what gets you the perfect score. She spotted it and pointed it out. Hey, Judge, <laughs> I'm perfect. I own it. <laughs> uh, Anna Lee, and she leans back and lets out a scream. Yeah, t taking a little uh, little of the thunder away from Zamaripa. Valerie Condos Field has to wait in line to get a hug from Anna Lee. Uh, that's a great moment at the Pac-10 Championships. Congratulations to Anna Lee with a perfect 10. That is a great line. We go back to the floor and the final performance for Sarah Tomchek of the University of Arizona, the senior. By the way, Deanna Graham, her teammate, received a 9.85 on the floor. And Graham needed a 9.9 to beat Ashino. So Graham will finish fourth in the all around. With a 39.275. We'll give you all these numbers again. Time you just enjoy Sarah Tomchek, a career high on this event of 995. Beautiful. And that 995 came just last week, so she's hot now. <laughs> well, that was a great first pass. She did a full twisting double back. This event is always the best one to perform in front of your home crowd. You can hear them clapping, or teammates are clapping, the fans are clapping. How many hours she spent in this building practicing? and learning her craft, and this is it. Her last appearance inside McHale Center. Front full, front tuck. Another great landing. She went 9.875 on the floor last year. That's Bill Reitner, head coach, just to the right in the blue shirt. Pumping her up for that last tumbling pass. Bill's been here for 20 years, and he's still pumped up for this run. Finishing with the double pike. Very difficult, beautiful <laughs> routine, and she loves it. That's terrific. Good for you. Sarah Tomchek, University of Arizona. Ah, and the Wildcat <laughs> with the scratch at the very end. Beautiful. Yeah, get on your feet. What a great day for U of A. Very exciting. Arizona has been very good today. They have overachieved for sure. This was the last tumbling pass. Double pike, perfect landing, and you can see everybody <laughs> go wild in the background. That's awesome. <laughs> right into the waiting arms of her teammates, and then scratch it out here at the finish. <laughs> 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 That's a great move right there. And they played that, uh, that cat noise they always play at the football games when they get a first down. A bear down, Sarah Tomchek. And the frat boys are out. Go Cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, it all comes down to the all-around. We will check Zamaripa's score. Did she have enough? Vanessa Zamaripa needed a 9-8 to become the all-around champion as a sophomore. We'll come back and tell you. A great day for the Bruins. They win the team championship. Valerie Condos Field, the head coach, and your new all-around Pac-10 champion, Vanessa Zamaripa with Amanda. Vanessa, you've said that getting a scholarship to UCLA was the highlight of your career. Well, winning the Pac-10s here at UCL for UCLA has to top that. Well, I'd have to say life experience at UCLA and being a UCLA Bruin will always be greater than winning an all-around, and definitely a team championship will always top being an all-rounder so we well, had a phenomenal performance and you are a sophomore it is just incredible you're also this year's all-around champion congratulations did you have any idea what you needed to pull off on the bars 
I actually had no idea. I didn't have any idea what the other gymnasts or how they were doing. I only focused on my cues, what I needed to do, and what my team needed me to do, and what I needed to do to help the team. So. Well, congratulations. And Coach Val, you have to be so proud of your youngster, but it's not just your sophomore, also your senior, Annalie. Can you tell me the dynamics of these two and what, what they mean to your team? Well, what's interesting is both of them, you know, have superstar quality, but both of them are very humble, um, but they both have grown so much from her freshman year to this year. Her mental focus is so much stronger, and Annalie is just a different person this year than she's ever been her whole life, and it's really cool because it's like she's Anna's little sister. And so they hang out around a lot together, and they're just developing the same morals and core values and life skills together along the way, and it's, it's a great relationship to see blossom. Well, not only did you pull off the Pac-10 title, this has to mean a lot for the confidence of your team as you go into the NCAAs. It absolutely does. It's, it's you know, we, we talk a lot about, we're not going to talk about we want to go in and win Pac-10s. We want to hit 24 for 24 routines, and how well can we do that? And so that was something I asked the girls. I said, you know, at what point did you know we would hit 24 for 24? And they said, as soon as we got here. And I said, okay, I knew it about a month ago. That's how well they've been training and so consistent and disciplined. There's, it's just been a great, easy, fun year. Well, the next meet is at home and that is the regionals. Yeah. What are your expectations and what are the plans as you head to that? Well, we, we can always clean up. You know, we've got a few things to clean up. Every single person can do a little bit better. We've seen them do a little better, although Annalise bar routine, I have to say that was a legitimate 10. Um, so happy for her about that, but it's great to be going back home to regionals. We've been getting great crowds in Poly Pavilion. I know that we've already sold out, a lot of the, the lower levels sold out, so it's gonna be a wonderful team uh, experience. I'm sure we're gonna get some great teams in there, and our team fires up every time they go into Poly, so it'll be fun, and Hope and Coach Wooden will be able to join us. Well, congratulations, another Pac-10 title, and we look forward to seeing you in the next couple of weeks. Back to you, Jim. The only way Polly's better is when the Wizard is there. So Vanessa Zamaripa wins the vault and the all-around, and Anna Lee was perfect on the bars. The 10 UCLA Pac-10 champs were coming back. Another beautiful day comes to a close in Tucson, Arizona. Inside the McHale Center, UCLA wins their second Pac-10 championship in a row in gymnastics. Not all the surprises, though, at the top. How about uh, Kristen Linton, the junior from Edmonds for Washington on the beam? She had an outstanding balance beam routine. You saw her jump sequence. Finished it out with a very strong dismount as well. And she ends up with a 9825. So congratulations to Kristen Linton from the University of Washington. And Karen Kane from the University of Washington is our pride of the pack from Kyle, Texas. She's going to graduate in three years with a degree in poli sci, a 4.0. And she actually uh, threw up a 9.7 on the vault earlier today. So congratulations to both Chris, Kristen Linton and Karen Kane from the University of Washington. Let's take a look at our individual champions. UCLA gets a piece of three of the four events. Zamaripo wins the vaults. Anna Lee was perfect on the bars. And Amanda, when we saw it, I, I saw you jumped out of your chair a little bit. Did you think it was a 10 when you saw it? It was definitely a 10. It was well-deserved, and uh, Coach Val said that as well. Laura Ann Chong for Oregon State, the beam, and then the floor was split between two excellent athletes, Brittany McCullough for UCLA, who is so explosive on those tumbling passes, and Carly Janiga, our defending champion in the all-around, who finished second this year. Zamaripa wins the all-around, and here's our team scores. So Zamaripa leads UCLA to a 197-350, which not only is the best here today inside McHale Center, but that is the top mark among all conference champions this weekend. So UCLA and Valerie Condos Field, well, she just told you that during the interview that the Bruins were peaking at the right time, but she still thinks that they can get better. Well, an impressive performance night, huge scores, but the bottom line is all three of these teams, UCLA, Stanford, and Oregon State, should fare well at the NCAAs. You know, and Valerie said, we can get better. We can clean things up with the exception of Anna Lee, that perfect 10 on the bars. Where does UCLA get better? That's right. Yeah. Perfect 10, we'll take it. Yeah, so UCLA wins it. Stanford is second. Oregon State is third. That is going to do it for us. For Dennis Kirkpatrick, your producer, Mitch Riggin, your director, Josh Hall, your AD, and Lee Gamble and audio, and, of course, for Amanda Borden, I'm Jim Watson saying so long for the McHale Center as UCLA wins the 2010 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. We'll see you next year.